step away from your benches. Well done. Congratulations. Good job, guys. Well done. <laughs> Timing ended up being perfect, but I still wasn't sure if the tuna was cooked properly. I was sort of feeling pretty relaxed. I was kind of getting in the zone and I was on top of all the things I needed to do. With, so, yeah, I was feeling pretty confident. This is the custard. That's my custard. With the saffron in. Big hit yeah. of saffron. Mm -hmm. So, I like I, I, I. So 20 minutes ago, I realised it's time to take my lid off the pressure cooker, which I would have preferred to do in the corner and in, in quiet but it turns out that the judges are, are there at that point. Let's have a look. Ah, there we go. Now that looks all right, doesn't it? Looks it? all right, smells good. It smells it's really, really good. nice. I'm going through the moment of truth now with my polenta because um, I'm trying to deep fry it, and if it hasn't set properly and if it's not cold enough, it will break apart inside the hot oil. So this is not going to work. The outside of the polenta crisps are sticking to the spoon, and I'm realising this is going nowhere really fast. What's happened? I've tried to deep fry my polenta. Yeah, and it's not working. Well, I don't have the right utensil. I what to... utensil do you need? Well, I usually normally use one of those deep fryer things. You okay. Know. So I put it on this and put it in there, but that that sort of stuff. You know what? I would maybe try shallow frying them. Shallow it? Yeah. Okay. It just gives you a bit more. Control. You need to get some control into it. Yep. You have 15 minutes to go, and this, if things aren't going quite right, is where the real cooks shine. Win this challenge, and it will give you an advantage going into round two. To make the caramel spider webs, you just put sugar in the saucepan, and then you just heat it, and it goes into a liquid. A friend told me how to do the sugar stuff. And I, I thought it was a good party trick to pull out. The thing I was most scared about is getting the tuna cooked properly. Not too much, not too little. And I sear it quickly in a bit of butter and then sprinkle the spice mix that I've made over the top of it. You've got five minutes to go, so this is it. All that hard work, all that practice, your signature dish is just about to go onto the plate. Make sure your timing's right. Give us some beautiful food. I'm getting hungry. We're very excited, guys, to taste your food. Taste check, taste check, and bring it home. I got my creme de out of the fridge. I realised it was a bit runny, and I, I put my uh, caramel on top and then uh, started plating up my curry. In this last five minutes, I've got to basically blacken the tuna, and we'll see what happens here. Yeah, that's not really hot enough. That's just not hot enough. It's two minutes to go and I'm plating up and I feel quite comfortable and I step back from my workbench and I realise that Kirk is having some trouble with his dish. And he does seem very panicked and he's hopping from side to side. You all right? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> What's the no? Uh, the no is that this didn't really get hot enough. Yeah. Hopefully it's kind of doing its business underneath. Yeah. But what I don't want it to be is too rare. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what it's going to draw through? It's really thin. You've got just on a minute. It's not far. Yep. You know what I would do? I'll get everything else on the plate. Come on, guys. You've got 60 seconds to go. You've got... 10 seconds to go. I'm still panicking because it's still a bit raw on the outside. Hey. This could turn out to be like Seven. a sashimi dish on top of my celeriac. Three, two, one. Step away from your benches. Well done. Congratulations. Good job, guys. Well done. <laughs> the timing ended up being perfect, but I still wasn't sure if the tuna was cooked properly. So now is tasting time. We're going to taste each one of your dishes individually. And of course, Matt, George and I will pass just a little bit of judgment. Remember, the winner gets the chance to pick the dish that all of you have to cook in the next round, which is the pressure test. First, Kurt Pengeli from In Excess. Please bring forward your dish for tasting. 
And there's kind of a bit of an awkward silence. It's almost like going to the headmaster's office or something. <laughs> My main concern through you know the whole hour and a half was that I was going to overcook it. Yeah. And when it came to the crunch, I was actually worried that I'd undercook it. Undercooking it. Should we have a look at the tuna first? Happy with that? Yeah. It's, mm. I think the tuna's cooked perfectly. It's really, really nice. It's pink in the centre. It's not rare. It's not wobbly. It's drawn through nicely, and that keeps it nice and moist. So there's a nice meatiness about it, which is great. Black and spice has got a kick to it. The lotus root chips, I love those. Give me a big pile of those in a basket and a beer. I'm a happy man. They're, they're fantastic. These are... I'm with Gary, they are awesome. They're a winner, aren't they? <laughs> they are really beautiful. I think the issue with the dish is it's a bit clumsy. It doesn't necessarily work as a whole. To a degree, some of that's about the plating and some of that's about how you play with the flavours. Because the elements there all work really well, they're just not quite speaking to each other. Thank you. Imagine if I dropped it, huh? You just thought, please compliment me. Please. I mean, the last thing you need in life is honest feedback. That's the problem with this situation, right? Is they have to give you honest feedback, otherwise it'd be a boring show. So under this comedy exterior, is there a real competitor that wants to win this one? Well, usually I wouldn't care, but today I, I feel very competitive. I don't know why. It's cooked well. It's a nice braise. It's got some sweetness about it, which I presume comes from the dates. I like the flavours. I like it a lot. I like the taste of the creamy soup, but it's not the creme catalan. Yeah. That's not a bad job, man. That, yeah. that braise is quite tasty. Yes, I know. <laughs> the issue with this dish here is it hasn't set. Yeah. So as a creme catalan, it's a, it's a failure. As a saffron custard, yeah. it's a success. You know, it's got good saffron flavor. The, the, the balance and the texture of the custard is impressive. Two dishes that are a step away from being really fine restaurant quality cooking. Thank you. Only one of you can win the advantage going into round two. And that person... I think it's about time to put my salmon on. I want to get the skin nice and crisp, so I cook that for about three minutes. Wendy Harmer, how's it going? What are you doing? Show me. Uh, well, um, 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 I'm just trying to get this sauce down a little. It's Is this like one of those classic French rabbit and mustard dishes? Yes. Matt comes over and has a taste and just has one of those inscrutable looks. Don't do that. It terrifies me. With 10 minutes to go, I'm cooking my salmon. I've got the skin right in the pan. Now it's the oven's turn to do the trick. From that point on, I'm going to pretty much stand there and watch it like a hawk. <laughs> the whites don't match. <laughs> the whites don't match. The whites do not match. They're white. Stop fussing. Just, white is white. Come on. Stop being Kandinsky. I, mean, I just don't like that when the whites don't match. I mean, nobody would understand it, but I actually take quite a long time standing at that rack hoping that something else would materialise, and of course it's not going to, so I just have to choose from what's on there. You have five minutes to go. I can feel the tension with five minutes to go. I've turned around and seen what's going on behind me, and it looks like mayhem. 
I'm trying to do some artwork with pieces of potato. Guys, it's the final countdown. You have one minute to go. This is the 60 seconds that count. <laughs> it's like a, not a very good smear, is it? It's a bit of a, like an oil slick. Thirty seconds to go. This is where it all counts. Go, go, go. Make sure your plating is clinical. The plate has no fingerprints. It's not a police station. This is MasterChef. Okay, you right. Off. You've got ten seconds to go. Five. Your first challenge of the day was to cook your signature dish. Winning this round is vital as it will give you a massive advantage going into round two. Our opener, the first dish we want to taste suitably, is salmon cabbages. Simon, what were you worried about most? I was most concerned about the, the salmon fillet being cooked well. So we find out. What are we looking for? Well, hopefully uh, just a slight touch of pink. In terms of how the salmon's cooked, it's over for me, um, and quite a bit over for me. If you'd have cooked that two to three minutes less in the oven, it would have been absolutely spot on. I can definitely taste this real freshness about this dish. There's some acidity in there, there's citrus in there, or lemon of some description. The herb crust is a really nice textural thing as well. Salmon is overcooked. But you know what? Fantastic job. You can bat really well and you can cook really well as well. Well done. Thanks. such a pity you didn't plate that bit of salmon on its side because where the skin's crispy, it's absolutely delicious. You get that other layer of texture that the dish lacks. Well done, Simon. Wendy, crunch time. Up you come with your beautiful rabbit dish. I think I'd rather stand in front of a drunken bucks night doing stand-up comedy than I would with my little plate of food in front of those three judges. Wendy. I like the dish. I like it because it's honest. And I like it because the, the mustard kicks out and the bacon and the cream. Whether or not those two elements go well together is a different thing. But I'd be happy to sit there and, and share it with you. So thank you. Thanks. I hope everyone at home's looking at this dish and going, they want to go out and cook rabbit, because rabbit is a great ingredient. Thank you for putting yourself on the plate and just get rid of the smear. Get rid of the smear. Good OK, girl. gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. As I'm taking my dish up to the judges, I kept telling myself, it doesn't matter if they don't like it. It does.
Alex? Škoti. Spana Kopita is beautiful. It's tasty. The the pastry, honestly, is I saw when I was looking at you rolling it out, it was a bit unorthodox. Yeah. It needs to be a bit more thin, but you know what? It's got this sort of this Moorish bite that you just wanna, you know, crack into it and get some more. Your filling is the hero here. Yeah. It's got dill, that flavour of dill. It's just beautiful. That I can't kiss my girlfriend after this. Yeah. No, she has to eat it too. Oh. And then it doesn't matter. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. <laughs> Thank you. Gone. How much garlic is there in there? Because it smells like you're four, trying to... Four cloves. <laughs> Do I like it in a restaurant? No, it's clumsy. Do I like it in a home setting? I love it. As a signature dish show, as an expression of you, yeah. then it's fantastic. Thank you. I'm really glad you cooked it. Thank, Thank you, Alex. You. Only one of you can win the advantage going into round two. And that person... is Alex Perry. Thank you. Thank you. I was really happy to Thank win you. that. I think that there is a slight edge with being able to select the recipe for, for the challenge that we have to do this afternoon. It doesn't mean that... Uh, I get to start 20 minutes before the rest of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's an advantage. 60 seconds to go, come on. Remember, we love this bit. This is just before you send the food out to the customers. Is it good enough? Is it right? Let's hope so. Gary, Eamon Sullivan, I mean, you know, our super fish in the pool. Will he be able to be super in the kitchen? He's attempting gnocchi and we know what happens with gnocchi if they're not right, they're like little rubbery bullets. He's also doing a lamb rump. It's probably one of the hardest parts of the lamb to cook because that lamb rump should be just pink. And if it's under that, if it's medium rare, it's chewy. So I think he's, he, he's really set himself a challenge. Gary Simon out the back there. He's the dark horse and, you know, he's showing some good skills there. The way he's butterflied open that leg, yeah, that's... it's popped the bocconcini, he's skewered it and he's talking about how to seal it yeah, in the correct good. manner. I think that's that's quite admirable. And let's see what he does with the rest of the dish. I'm excited. Guys, you've got half an hour to go, half an hour. Remember, you want to win this round to get every advantage going into round two. Getting the meat out of the bug is always a bit tricky. is really hard. They put up a fight. Gotcha. Clearly the hero of this salad is the Moreton Bay bug and I always worry about getting the Moreton Bay bug just right. It's such a delicate meat that if you overcook it you just ruin it and you can't fix that. So I just very lightly poached it and took it out as soon as I could. So the potatoes are ready. It's really important to get the skin off and use them while they're warm so they stay nice and moist and the gnocchi really binds together. And I put it through a, a food ricer, which gives me a really fine, silky texture. This is the part I'm really nervous about. There we go. Make or break time. So I try to take my time and try to do it right because I don't have time to boil some more and make it again. It's really important to be careful with the mixture. You really want it to be velvety in texture so that when they bite into it, it's really soft and pillowy. I roll them into thin logs and cut them into small portions ready to be uh, poached and cooked. How are you going? You're going to make it, make it in time? I think so. I think so. What I liked about having Matt around was Matt loves food and you can watch his face as he's tasting something. Mm -hmm. Like that? Good. Cool getting a bit of a sense of what he was interested in. So Matt comes around and starts tasting the dishes. Smells good. Smells good. So then he just gives that little eyebrow. And 
kind of scary. It scares me. So you've got cheese in three elements. So yeah. The question for me is going to be, how are you going to make it taste light on the palate? I love rich food. I was talking to Matt, and uh, he thought that there was a lot of cheese involved in my dish. It'll look all right on the plate, and I think it's just about those tastes. My response to that was to put more buffalo bocconcini in the salad. Let's just take some risks. OK, big guy, if it's about cheese, let's think outside the square. We're down to the nitty-gritty now. You have 15 minutes to go. Let's pull it together. Plating up and dressing a dish is only an extension of your preparation. Leave yourself enough time to make those finishes and bring us something beautiful. That's perfect. Just finishing plating up the Fulton Bay bugs. Steak has to cook, but that won't take long. And I'm hoping the panna cotta is set. I better go and check that, I think. So the plan was to leave the gnocchi in for three minutes just until it's risen to the top of the water. But five minutes later, I'm thinking, uh-oh. And it just doesn't look right. It looks a bit tattered around the edges. It's not holding together as well as it usually does. And uh, I start contemplating making some more because I wasn't happy. I think I have time. I run over to the spare bit I have and I start rolling out some more. So there's five minutes left before you put up the best signature dish you've ever put up in your life. I knew the time was running out. I decided to stick with the gnocchi I've already made and uh, just focus on getting it ready on time and plating it up well. I'm looking at this creation that I've got here thinking, mm, OK, and I'm wondering whether I do the ketchup manis and drizzle the plate or not. I get this smell. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's my sauce burning. I know at this point that, you know, that it may not be salvageable. So I quickly put some stock in it, have a taste. Once it's on the steak, maybe it'll be OK. I had to make the choice, do I put it on or don't I? 60 seconds to go, come on! Remember, we love this bit. This is just before you send the food out to the customers. Is it good enough? Is it right? Let's hope so. Five, four, three, two, one. So it's the moment of truth. The time when we get to see if the dish that you've cooked has the same impact on us as it has on your friends and your family. The first dish we want to taste is Mr. Westaway's. I did my best and whatever feedback I get, I'll take on the chin. That's all I can do. Simon, pleased with yourself? I don't feel as if it was a train wreck, totally. It's just cooked. If you send that out to a customer in a restaurant, the chances are it might get set back to the kitchen. Honestly, it looks like spew. But it tastes really good. <laughs> I'd eat that as a side dish. Yeah. Potatoes, undercooked, never a good thing. The problem with this dish is you've bolted too many things together. And what we end up with is a Frankenstein. We have enough cheese here to feed Switzerland for a month. Thank you. The next person up to the tasting table is Eamon. 
The nerves were running high, pretty similar to standing behind the blocks for, for an important swim. Very technical dish. Is it a reflection of your skills, do you think? It's a bit of my swimming, I think, transferring over to, to cooking. It's very technical what I do, and I try to make it as perfect as possible. You've cooked it well. It was really lovely and pink when it came out of the oven. What is not working as well is the gnocchi. They're not perfect. They're a little bit bouncy. It's a great dish. It's a really restaurant quality plating. You'd see people paying great money for that. And you can see them enjoying it. Whether it's good enough, or one dish to beat the three dishes of Anna Bly is another question. Unfortunately, there can only be one person that goes through from this round into the semi-finals, and it's the last spot, so it's extra special. Guys, you've got less than 15 minutes to go. Leave yourself enough time to plate up. It's a beautiful dessert. It needs time. Now, remember, Alex, Fuzzy, you still have your 90-second lifeline. Don't leave it too late. I think I'm going to use my 90 seconds right now. My cake is iced and ready, and I want to pull out my twill, but I think this is a perfect time to use my lifeline. You've called for help. Help! 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 Your time starts now, you have 90 seconds. I think you can use that one if you this pick one? it up now. Yep, Give serve. it a nice twist. That's it, you've got it. That's lovely. I grabbed my ice cream from the fridge. She says it looks pretty good. I'm feeling really confident now. It is a little bit hard to scoop. Keep it in the fridge. In the fridge. And that'll be fine. Cool. All right, your time's up, Alex. Do you think you use your lifeline at the right time? It was awesome, thank you very much. Great, right, you're doing well. It's time to keep working on the tool. I open the oven and it's browned up a little and it's getting really close to time. So I've got to work on it. So I got a piece of PVC pipe and I'm twisting it around the piping and I'm thinking, I really hope it comes off the pipe because I don't know how hard I've twisted that on. You have five minutes to go. Come on, guys, you can do it, come on. So I hear five minutes to go and I still haven't used my lifeline. Freak out time. Your time starts now, Fuzzy. Did you 90 count my seconds. Jewel and see if it's if it's looking fabulous or not. Yeah, it needs a bit more colour. Turn the oven up. Turn the oven up. A, the oven up. a little bit. I am feeling so much pressure to do justice to Katrina's recipe. I hope I don't disappoint her. That looks good. That looks good. Kind of looks like yours. And can we check out the twills one more time before you go? They're browning up now. Get about three seconds. I'll, I'll take the best one and twist it. Two. Twist it now. Okay, cool. One, that's it, Fuzzy. Come on, guys, there's only one spot in that semi-final. Come on! You need to be well into plating up now. This is crucial. Guys, this is the final 60 seconds to make it look absolutely gorgeous. Come on! Man, I am so mad at myself, leaving it down to the last minute to frickin' plate up. What is wrong with me? Come on, Fuzzy. I'm trying, I'm trying. You're gonna run out of time. The pressure starts to kick in a bit, but I'm just still doing it. I'm sticking to my plan and I'm not freaking out. You have 10 seconds to go. It's completely insane. Everybody's madly rushing around. There's loud voices coming from George and Gary. Come on! It's all going on. Five, four, Three, two, one. That's it, you're done. Step away from your benches. Good well job. Done, guys. Well Good done. Job. Well done. Walking to the restaurant with my dish, all I'm thinking is don't fall, don't melt. Peter, you must be immensely proud of yourself. That looks fabulous. Looks like it's standing up. <laughs> it's looks melting really, fast. It's standing up. Looks really, really good. Okay, let's uh, let's taste this crazy thing, George.
Peter, firstly on the look, well done. Looks fantastic. The white chocolate cake is beautiful. It's nice and soft. You've cooked that absolutely perfectly. The ice cream, beautiful. Fresh, strawberry, creamy. That is a good recipe and you've made it well. The only negative mm -hmm. is how that twill is cooked. So it's a little bit soft and chewy and that spoils it. Yeah, yeah. What you've got there is this rich, amazing strawberry ice cream. It's just beautiful. And I want you to go home and I want you to make it for your kids because you know how to make it. There's no excuse. Kids, you're going to get ice cream from Daddy, all right? Daddy Peter's going to make you some. You know what? For a funny guy, you're all right. <laughs> the disappointing thing is the flavour of your biscuit, you know, it just shouldn't be leathery like that. And, and that, that's a miss. And it's a pity because it's the one thing that lets down the dish. Peter, thank you very much indeed. You may leave. Thank you, Peter. I'm walking through that restaurant and I'm thinking about how many people have just crumbled in this scenario. Everyone's so serious. It's really, really freaky. Fuzzy, you picked the strawberry dessert. Mm -hmm. Are you happy about that choice now? Well, I can't look back now and think that I wish that I picked the chocolate dessert. I still love strawberries and cream and it's the best that I could do. It looks like it's melting on the plate, but at the end of the day, it's all about the flavour. So shall we taste? Please do. problem with the cake. It tastes quite omelette-y, eggy. And your twirl hasn't got the crunch that I was looking for, that crispness I was looking for. It's also quite thick in terms of execution. Great ice cream, good strawberries. Yeah. And I'm sure the next time you make it, it'll be fantastic. But the highlight on this plate is that, that ice cream for me. I thought it was really powerful and full of strawberry flavour. Fantastic effort. Fuzzy, thanks very much for putting so much effort in and putting up a beautiful dessert. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Fuzzy. Cheers. It's my turn to walk up to the judges, and all I'm thinking is I got slammed in the first heat, and I'm really hoping it doesn't happen again. In terms of how you felt it went, what are you feeling now? I don't make dessert. It's something I don't do and... I don't know, I miss the elements. So I have trouble with uh, recipes, basically. And um, I made tonight a white custard with egg whites. I messed up the custard so bad. To start again. And I seem to do that a lot. I was diagnosed with dyslexia when I was quite young and under any pressure and reading, I've, I, I falter, you know. And I've, I, I went to a sort of a special school when I was a kid and. You know, they helped me a lot, and I'd, I'd need to be in a sort of, yeah, controlled environment, quiet, and, and that's how I can sort of manage yeah, it. Pressure can bring out some shocking bits you've got over in the past, yeah. Definitely. So we're going to toast? So, Alex, good punch on the ice cream. It's fantastic. Lots of zingy flavour. The Chantilly cream's a little bit too much vanilla essence. It's a bit artificial. You know, I need just a little in there next time. And the twill, which is the little biscuit, has got a perfect little snap, lovely golden brown. Looks great. Awesome. One of the underrated things, and it's fascinating because you're a musician, the underrated things about food is sound. And when George was playing up, this is the sound I heard. That little crisp crack. I need to taste that to know that you have done what no one else has done. You've recreated Katrina's twirl in the most beautiful manner. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you, Alex. We've tasted your dishes. We've decided which one of you will take the final place in our semi-finals. That means two of you are about to go home. I'm starting to freak out a little bit. 
I really want to win this. Alex, beautiful plating. Great flavours, great textures. A little bit too much vanilla essence in your Chantilly. Fuzzy. Beautiful dish. Great ice cream. A little problem with the biscuit and the sponge, perhaps not quite as light as the others. Peter, a total surprise. You look like you were in the weeds. And at the end, what you brought into that tasting room, something that looked great, tasted really good, was let down by one thing, the leatheriness of that biscuit. Unfortunately, there can only be one person that goes through from this round into the semi-finals, and it's the last spot. So it's extra special. Fuzzy? Unfortunately, it's not you. It's OK. You did, however, a fantastic job. And George and I were thrilled watching you work through each one of those elements of the dishes. You were just like a chef in the kitchen. But you should be very proud of yourself. So keep going and enjoy your food. Thank you so much. George loves my food, Matt loves my food, and Gary loves my food. The food that I can cook, they like. Thank God for that. <laughs> Alex? Peter, it's down to you two. It's down to the dish that you cooked in the pressure test. There can only be one winner today, and that person Alex, you cooked the best dish. Well done. Fantastic job. Mate. I can't believe it. This is a dessert. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Top job, mate. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you so much. When you put that dessert in front of us, it looked absolutely gorgeous. But in the end, it comes down to what it tastes like. And you hit the nail square on the head. Well done. Thank you. Good job, Alex. Well done, well done, done man. The winner is announced, and it's me. And I, I absolutely can't believe it. I mean, I, I really wanted it. Did I think I'd get it? I, well, no. <laughs> I can't believe I won, and with dessert, of all things. Fuzzy Peter, we thank you for being part of Celebrity MasterChef and thank you for bringing us some amazing dishes. See you later. Thank you so much. Thanks Pleasure. for having us. Ball. Thank you so much. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, Thanks, Fuzzy. Fuzzy. Knock him dead, man. Yeah. yeah? You have to win. <laughs> I'm walking away quite chuffed with myself, you know, even though I haven't won, but I've learnt a lot and nothing is impossible in the kitchen if you apply yourself, my friends. Nothing. Kick down the door. Look at that side. Come on. Oh, what a When I realised that the fish wasn't cooked, I was absolutely gutted. All I could think of was Rachel, I've let her down, I've put her in a precarious position as well now. Oh. I've got everything prepared except the only thing I'm waiting on is the puddings in the oven. I decided to just pull them out. If they were undercooked, just have to grin and bear it. If the pudding didn't come out right, we were done for. I cut it straight in half. I looked, and it was good. Yay! <laughs> good girl. Oh, well done. Five minutes to go to create the most beautiful Christmas lunch ever. I decide it's time to get my panna cotta out of the freezer and I want to plate it up. I put my panna cotta in the hot water and try and release it from the mould. This is the key moment. If they don't come out right, I'm gone. Nothing's happening. It's sticking. I'm starting to panic and I'm worried that it's not set in time. Banging it on the plate, trying to wedge it out. Nothing's happening. Panna cotta is not coming out of the mould, and I'm worried that when it does, it could go everywhere. Finally, the panna cotta budges from the mould, and it sits on the plate nicely. You have one minute to go, guys. Come on. You're down to the wire now. I'm under the pump here, and I'm in trouble. He finally gets his three panna cottas out on the serving plate. 10 seconds to go. Panna cottas are holding. 
I'd start to drizzle the coolie on top. Everything seems to be going OK, and then all of a sudden, disaster strikes. It goes everywhere. One, that's it. Step away from your stoves. Brilliant job. That is amazing. I check out our three dishes. Oh, you're so incredible. I actually think, you know what? We could win this. You've just completed round two, the invention test. The two teams that have created the best Christmas lunch will go straight through to the next semi-final. And for the bottom team, the person that's created the worst dish will go home. So it's tasting time. The first pair we'd like to see, Simon and Alex. Bring your food up. Walking to the front with the panna cotta puddle is not something I'm proud of. It looks depressing and it's disappointing. OK, let's find out about this fish. Is it cooked? You've cooked the fish perfectly. It's spot on, it's moist. It all looks good, but does it deliver in terms of taste? Personally, I would have liked more flavour in that fish. It's pure in a sense, it's just snapper. Do I like it? It's a feast. But have you nailed it? Not sure. Steaks. Pooch in the prawns. Potatoes that should be crunchy, that are soft. Beans that should be quite yielding, that are crunchy. Big problem. Snapper, which is possibly the most abused fish in Australian restaurants. Beautifully cooked. And that's really rare. The panna cotta. In terms of flavour, I'd devour all of that because it's really tasty. It's creamy and it's yum. But unfortunately, it doesn't look too sexy. I, I like all these little components. It's fun. And I think you've achieved the, the whole Christmas theme. It's colourful, exciting to look at. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Thank you for bringing the spirit of Christmas on the table. Hold well on. I know that Simon and I have done our best. Hopefully our flavours and our passion for food will win through. Kirk, Eamon, bring your dishes. After seeing the other two teams have put up, I'm feeling a bit nervous. This thing here, at your next concert, Kirk, maybe use it as a prop on your head or something, because <laughs> it's disgusting. But that there is exciting. That salad, that prawn salad with the mango in it, is beautiful. It's got this awesome balance of acid, chilli, and I could eat all of that. It's so yummy. That is a beautiful dish. I love pavlova. It's a marvellous thing. I like the fact it's thin, I like the fact it's chewy in the middle. And I love the fact that when you were plating up, and these beautiful half-cut blueberries, these little spikes of strawberry, the passion fruit over the top, and you carefully dusted it with icing sugar. The question I have is enough Christmas on this table to keep you out of the bottom. Walking back to the bench, very confident in the fact that they all like the dishes. A bit unconfident, it's not Christmassy enough. 
Next up onto the tasting table, our two girls, Michelle and Rachel. It's our turn to take our dishes to the judges and I'm feeling good. I'm feeling a sense of girl power. <laughs> What about the snapper? Is it cooked? <laughs> the million dollar question. Uh, I believe that it is. Let's taste them. Unfortunately, the top part is not cooked. Right, first up, looks fantastic. Looks brilliant, looks clean looks thoughtful, looks impressive. That fish comes to the table, it's raw in the middle, and from that section there, which is the meatiest and sweetest, can't eat it. That is a big letdown. When I realised that the fish wasn't cooked, I was absolutely gutted. All I could think of was Rachel, I've let her down, I've put her in a precarious position as well now. Oh. the sound of sleigh bells ringing, well done. These puddings are the sort of thing that I would want to steal to say this is a future of Christmas pudding in Australia. Absolutely delicious, knockout dish. It is better than Eamon's dessert earlier on today. <laughs> but the question remains, is the quality of those puddings enough to save you from the problem with the snapper, will those puddings stop you being in the bottom pair? I just went from this massive high to this massive low. Bugger. <laughs> there can only be one winner. The winner. Five minutes to go and a salmon is still in the oven, but my timer hasn't gone off. Timer didn't go off. Can you believe that? I am just praying, praying to the heavens above that my salmon is not overcooked. Yeah. Damn it. Ah. You have 60 seconds left to serve the best signature dish you've ever cooked in your life. I began to feel as though the risotto could have done with a little bit more time and a little bit more wetness. Five. Four, three, two, one. That's it, time's up. Step away from your benches. Good job. <gasps> oh man, that was stress. Didn't think I would make it, but it's done. And we've all got plates on the table. We did it. The moment of truth. Matt, George and myself will call you up individually and taste your food. And then we will decide on a winner the person who goes through into round two with that advantage. The first dish we'd like to try is Ryan's. I'm not really nervous about what the judge is going to say, as long as they don't absolutely can it, and <laughs> I feel really embarrassed. Ryan, happy? Yeah, always feel good about food. <laughs> All right, well, let's taste. Good pasta. Tastes nice. It's nicely seasoned. And it's delicate, it's soft, and it's got a little bit of a bite in, so that's a good job on that. Bolognese is nice and tasty, and you can taste all those components, so they come through. What I don't like about it, Bolognese should be cooked for longer for me. Other than that, it's a good spag bowl. Great, thanks. Well done. Thank you. I think the sauce has got all the right ingredients in it. 
but actually it just needs a lot more olive oil, all right? That's the, the, the yummy part of a bolognese. But great job with the pasta, well done. In short, I love the pasta. Excellent example of good pasta that could sit on any restaurant menu. In terms of the bolognese, it's big, it's earthy, it's real. So well done. Thank you. I'm pretty happy. I've come away with some good feedback and pretty confident that I've, I've cooked a good dish. As I walk to the front of the room with my two dishes, I'm really nervous. I know the level that the judges expect, and that's quite high. So, Rachel, mm -hmm. you did two dishes. I did. Had you bitten off more than you could chew? Um, no, I'm proud that I did the two. Well, let's try it. Let's try the salmon first, shall we? What do you want it to look like? A little bit pink on the inside. Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah, pretty happy, <laughs> I think. I think you've cooked that salmon perfectly. You've Overcooked the skin a little bit, got a wee bit over, but you know what? It tastes beautiful. It tastes fantastic. What you got here is crepes that are Moorish and they're tasty and they're yum and they make, make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside when you eat them. And what you've demonstrated is, is chefy skills. Crepes, crepe patissiere. I'm gobsmacked to be able to put two dishes up in an hour and a half. Wow. Thank you. I'm so relieved it's over. I'm happy with what I've cooked. I'm happy with the judges' comments. I'm feeling really good. George, you're the last one up. Bring your dishes. As I walked up to confront the judges, I was hoping that they didn't think that what I'd done was awful. You've done an incredible job to not overcook the oyster. And I was actually a bit concerned about the parmesan overpowering the oyster, but it's actually quite nice. Sad this sort of saltiness to it. So well done, and also well done in shucking them. I think that's very commendable. George, the moment of truth. When you eat risotto, you should never be left with a chalky residue in your mouth. It should be al dente, which means there's a slight bite to it, but it's still soft and it's still giving, and it goes. It's a little bit chalky. However, in saying that, the flavour, the basil, you certainly got the basil flavour in there. It's really strong, there's parmesan, the pine nuts are a nice touch. I like it, you've done a good job. Thank you very much. You. Well done. Good lamb, good salad, sweet, but risotto's a fail for me. If I was cooking to impress them enough for them to give me a job, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't get it. George, Rachel, Ryan, tasted your dishes. Well done, good effort. The nice thing to see today was the fact you were concentrating. There was some seriousness in the kitchen. George, firstly with yours. We know you've got a bit of a reputation for your risotto, and now we find out you've got a reputation for your oysters negus. Nice to see that you put together a beautiful looking meal. Good job. Thank you. Rachel, beautifully cooked salmon, lovely crepes, takes a bit of skill. Good job. Ryan, classic spag bowl. Your pasta was beautifully cooked. You made it with your own hands. Can't ask for better than that. And the sauce, you can see all the vegetables through it, strong in tomato, it's gutsy. And like you say, the boys, they love it. Well done. But there can only be one winner. The winner is Rachel. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, what a surprise. I cannot believe the judges picked me. I'm the winner, the only girl. Go, girls, woohoo! Rachel, fantastic. You walk into the kitchen in stilettos and everyone here goes, oh no. And 
This is a real kitchen. We want to see people cook, and that's what you did today. You cooked two dishes with excellence and precision. Well done. Michelle, you're the first one up. When I started walking towards the judges with my plate, I thought, oh, what if I haven't cooked enough? It's like, oh, I just put it down and step away from the dish. Just under an hour to go to produce the most spectacular signature dish that the whole of Australia is going to love. My secret weapon is good mashed potato, and I like it a lot, and my kids like it a lot, and my wife particularly likes it, is a couple of yolks thrown in. It's a bit rich, but it tastes fantastic. So Gary Peter, he's triumphed on the rugby field for the Wallabies. He's a best-selling author, but will he triumph today in the MasterChef? I like him. He's bought in his bandana. He's here for a bit of battle. What I like about his cooking, he's lived in France, he's lived in Italy, and he's bringing a bit of that back to Australia. Egg yolk in a mash? Not nice. If he doesn't do something spectacular with that mashed potato and those egg yolks, then I don't think it's going to work. Kathleen, how do you think she's going? Well, I mean, she's doing two dishes. Mm -hmm. She's doing her chicken adobo and, yep. and also some sort of flan. Yep. Has she bitten off too much? Is she going to put enough emphasis into that chicken dish? The question is, is it too simple? We love simple food, but it's got to pack a punch. It's got a really taste of something. Michelle, she's doing lean, really lean lamb cutlets. She's doing healthy. She hasn't seasoned with salt at all. It's all about the spices. Lots of different spices in there. Hopefully, she's packed it with lots and lots of flavour. So look, I think it might be really quite nice. You've got 30 minutes to go. Don't forget, you want to cook to win. Why? Because it's going to give you a fantastic advantage going into the next round this afternoon. The judges are concerned maybe my flan might be a bit too simple, but as long as I get it perfect, then it should be great. Let's have a look at this uh, flan. See, that looks done to me. Mm. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's not done. Bit wobbly. Oh my goodness, let's put it back far in. Off. Not yeah. far off. You've still got 20 minutes to go. What I'm worried about with the flan, there's a procedure where you turn it upside down and you want it to just slip out really easily and you don't want it to like just crumble into a big heap. You want it to be nice and firm and, and take on a really great shape. When Matt Preston walked up to my bench, I started sweating bullets. This guy knows his stuff and he wasn't mucking around. Well, well what's your spice mix? It's um, Ras El... Uh, Ras... Oh, I always get it wrong. Ras El Hanout. That's the one. Putting some herbs through your couscous? Yeah, because this is what's going in through it. OK, fantastic. Thank you, Michelle. I was like, oh, 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 my god. This is harder than any workout. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm making mashed potato, and it's going to be fabulous. What do you think? The question is going to be whether your mashed potato is about the, the cream and the butter, or whether it's about the potato. Now, what's, what's here? This is um, chicken adobo. It's quite a tasty dish, so it can, if you add too much water, it can be quite bland. Ooh. Quite a simple dish. Yes, which is why I thought I should go another one. It's called lecce flan, or I've just called it a caramel flan. Actually quite high wire yeah. stuff, because if you get things wrong with either of those dishes, yeah, they crash and burn. With about 15 minutes to go, I knew the lamb needed to go on now. I really need to make sure that they stay juicy and I don't overcook them, which is really easy to do when you've removed all the fat. My chief fear at this point is it's going to be dry inside. I haven't got time to check. I'll just have to trust that it's OK. You have 10 minutes to go. Oh, crap. You should be getting close to thinking about plating up. Do not sell yourself short. It can all go wrong at the last minute. Uh, when I turn that flan out, it's got to stay in form. I have had an instance where it hasn't worked out. I flipped it over too early. It's worrying because this challenge is important to me. Oh, crap. 
magic plop sound. Couldn't have asked for a better looking flag. Right guys, you got five minutes to go. Make sure you played it up absolutely sexy. I'm trying to play it up sexy. Oh my God, I haven't put it on the plate. And now I've got to plate this thing up and now I've got to make it look really appetizing. That looks good, Michelle. I look over my shoulder and I see that Michelle is starting to do something fabulous. It looks like it could have come out of a restaurant. And I shrink a little inside. You have 90 seconds left in this first round. Win it, win it, win it. You know, that looks kind of funny. 60 seconds to go. Have 10 seconds. Come on, Michelle. I'm seriously going for it. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Time's up. Step away from your stoves. Well done, guys. Well done. When the final whistle blows, I'm actually feeling reasonably strong because whatever else, it has not been a disaster, which is what I feared. I'm looking at my chicken dish and I should have listened to my instincts and bowled them up and served them exactly how I eat, eat that dish at home. Well, your first MasterChef challenge was to create your signature dish, the dish you show to your friends to impress them and to show you who you really are. Now we need to see if that dish will impress us. If you really have what it takes to become Australia's first celebrity master chef. Michelle, you're the first one up. When I started walking towards the judges with my plate, I thought, oh, what if I haven't cooked enough? It's like, oh, I just put it down and step away from the dish. OK, let's try. I think your presentation is spot on. It all works in balance. You've got just about the right amount of yogurt. You've got three beautiful cutlets, beautifully Frenched, but you've cooked the lamb beautifully. It's really pink. And in terms of the couscous, it's nice and separate. It's not gluggy. Yeah. But a good bit of salt in there would just do it wonders. Well, the question is, I mean, can healthy food taste good? packs flavour, definitely. But I totally agree with Gary. Salt brings flavour out. There's other ways you can get salt into food. Things like dehydrated chickpeas, if you pound them up and dust a piece of meat with it or a piece of fish, it actually sort of acts like salt. OK. As a cook, you've done a really brilliant job and I would actually sit there and eat all that. Thank you. God, it's quite a, quite a monotone dish because the spices dominate all those elements together. Because what's there is a great potential dish. It just needs a bit more balance in terms of other areas of salt, sweet and acidity. I felt that I'd done a good dish, but after their feedback, I thought, hmm, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to stand with this now. I put my dishes down and I step back and there's utter silence and it's like, Deafening. So, if these two dishes were on a menu in a restaurant, what would you call them? I'd call it chicken adobo and caramel flan. I like the chicken. It's quite a peasant dish. It's a plain dish yes. for me. But I don't know. I think I'd like to see lots of sauce. I think that's how it would all gel together for me. Gary, Michelle's watching. Sorry, Michelle. It's another 10 press-ups, Gary. I love that flan. And... <laughs> <laughs> It's 
it's absolutely delicious. You get this texture in your mouth of like smooth, um, and then you get this sugar hit. It's just really delicious, it's tasty. I want the recipe off you and well done. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am so happy with all my comments, it's quite surreal. I'm the first person to take my dish up to the judges and I'm still pumped, I'm still wired from what just happened. I think that they could really see that on my face as well. This is where you are playing as a team. You play as a team and you all have to fit the puzzles together. Come on, come on. Torch are up and waiting, yeah? We don't want these back. Corruption. Michelle, that looks like yeah? Yeah. Look at that. Throw that away, throw it away. I ended up having Steve, the head chef, come over and say, here's how I want you to do it. Now this, yeah? Watch. Yeah. Just pulling it forward like that and you're pushing it right on the side, right? So after that, I start really nailing my dishes. They started looking better and better and better. Entrees up. I feel really proud. Perfect, yeah? Great. So I've seen everyone under the stress of having to get their dishes up, and now it's my turn. Chef, first dessert's up. Yes. My first batch of fondants that came out looked perfect. They were just a little bit jiggly. New order. Let's pick up five feet, one rare, one medium, one medium rare, one medium well, one well done. It's so important to cook the meat as how it's ordered, because if I waste all this beef, it's going to get sent back, and I'm going to run out of beef to serve for the rest of the day. The beef fillet, how are you cooking that? Butter poaching it? Yep, poaching it into the butter sauce. You can understand why the chef is wanting to butter poach it. You know, it's a beautiful piece of meat. It's Angus beef. Yep. It's got a plus eight score of marbling. With a quality product like that, yep. you can't go wrong. almost spoiled it for me, but the beef was very tender and juicy, so that made up for it, really. It's not too salty or too flavoured, it's just a piece of barbecue beef, yeah. The gravy or sauce has still got some powder. I was just asking whether chefs would mind if I actually took it home for the dogs, because I think they'd like it. I've got a Simba, there was powder on the sauce. I get one or two dishes sent back. Yeah, let's go. I need a medium rare beef now. <sighs> Aiden, there's powder in the sauce. I yep. need one up right yep. now. It's right now. You just, you start freaking out. If I don't serve it right, they're gonna throw it back and I'm gonna have to cook it again, which slows down the whole service and that affects everyone. Two fondants, up. Second batch of fondants come, serve them out. They look fine to me. We had the, the chocolate torch, but it was just terribly burnt from the outside all the way in. And... It looked like it should have been really, really nice, but it's burnt. Sorry. What's wrong with it? It's burnt. Oh. I'm plating a dish as usual, and then all of a sudden I hear, burnt fondants. OK, I need another fondant, yeah? They said the last one was burnt. Watch how you put it on the tray. If it's too hot at the bottom, it burns, OK? I wanted to make Steve proud, and a burnt fondant isn't going to make Steve proud. We need one right now. You put so much effort into creating and making the dish so perfect, and someone's looked at it and told me it was burnt. It, it hurt. Is that burnt? Good, let's see it. No, that's good to go. That's perfect. Yeah, that's the way I want it. Chef, new fondant is up. Wait. That's the way. You gotta make sure you, someone sends it back. It has to be perfect, yeah? Okay. Yeah, we don't want them to complain it twice. Yes, chef. Yeah, go. <gasps> I'll do with that. Cool, yes. Strain it, and you're there. That is a good garnish, yeah? The high point of service for me was either when I finally kind of really was getting my head around putting it together. Guys, we're picking up the last table for entrees. One kingfish, one tort. Another one. Or when it was over. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you. That was that was exciting. It's my uh, that's my dish. <laughs> the entree service is over. I'm exhausted, relieved. It was just the most amazing rush I've ever had. Charlie. Good work. Good work. Good work. Did well. Did well.
did well. Thank you. Guys, it's 20 to 2. You heard it. Entree service is now over. So I know that I need to pick up speed and I know I need to be on my game. And the third batch of finance that came out were falling over. No, no. Chef, they're not... What's wrong? They're all runny. I lift the mould off the fondant and they totally collapse. Look, they're too... Oh, they're too runny. And, and we put them in longer, they're too hard. If the oven cools down, yeah, they're going to take a little longer to cook. Set. Yeah. That's batch number three and I really need to start getting them right. Yeah, how long beef, how long pork? Uh, five minutes. You open the beef? Yeah, just getting the cheek. Beginning of service, I was lost, you know, I didn't quite understand, you know, the calls for orders and things like that. And this is the last two mains, guys. Four beef, two medium rare, two medium, and four pork. But once that clicked in for me, I really felt confident and I started to fire up. Yeah. Two pork, come in. And you helping us with dinner, right? <sighs> I'm glad it's all over, but at the same time, it was a real buzz. Well, hey. I don't think I've ever sweat that much in my life. I know. The fact that I've got through this whole service being an amateur chef and it's a one hat restaurant, which is, is no easy feat. I'm pretty proud of myself. Yeah, I'm sort of the only one in here. It's gone really quiet. By the end of service, I was going really great. At one point, I had nine plates on the workbench at once. I felt like a machine. Yum. I love it. I was so happy and so relieved that all that hard work paid off. Right, guys, it's 3.30. Service is over. Come forward, please. Come on. Come on, Alex. Come on, Eamon. Brilliant job. Well done. I think you should all pat each other on the back. <laughs> yeah? Fantastic. Well done. Well done, guys. Well done. So George and I are going to go and taste your dishes, decide who's cooked the best dish of the day, and, of course, in the end, who has to leave the competition. Everyone seems pretty happy, so we'll see what happens when it comes to judgement. Service was over, but we had to plate up one final dish for the judges. Needless to say, it was the most important dish of the day. I'm the first person to take my dish up to the judges, and I'm still pumped. I'm still wired from what just happened. I think that they could really see that on my face as well. So, Michelle, how did you find your first real day in a commercial kitchen? I think it was the most intense experience I've ever had. But I loved it. My heart was just pumping the whole time. OK, we better taste your dish before the sorbet melts. Let's go, George. <laughs> Thanks, George. I think, to be honest, and I've eaten this dish before, I think the fish is cut really quite thick. I think it's a little bit too thick for me, you know, to really enjoy it and not quite enough of the salad underneath for it to complement each other. That's the whole idea. A little piece of fish, a little bit of the salad, you know, all those little shreddy vegetables. Um, nice presentation. You've done well. I think you got better throughout the service. And obviously that last dish you put up, I think, was probably the best one that I saw. Yeah. Some of them were a little bit ropey. Is that a pip? Yeah. Lemon pips? Yeah, that's a shame because your presentation's quite beautiful, flavour's there, seasoned well, but that does let it down. I was so careful with my salads and of all the dishes that I pumped out through that kitchen, the one that goes in front of the judges is the one with a lemon pip in it. Can I get any more unlucky? <laughs> You're emotional, and I, that's, I've not yeah. seen you. You like, I mean, I can see you welling. I mean, I can, I can it's sense amazing. it. Amazing. It's just, it's not. It's just that you're so pumped. I just wanted it to be perfect. The balance of flavours is really important, and you've managed to achieve that. The cutting of the of the radish, cucumber has to be perfect. It is. The sorbet can't be too big because it's quite sweet. So there's a danger it will overpower everything, and your ratio was good. The only issue other than that lemon pit, is the cutting of the fish. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle.
So I take my plate out to the judges and there's just that horrible silence while you're waiting for them to tell you what they think. You've got a giant smear of something down <laughs> your left leg. I know, I have. I don't know what it is. I think it's butter. <laughs> How did you go in the kitchen? Um, not so well. I burnt a bunch of things and, uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty stressful time. Very, very difficult. Thank you. George, would you play, please? Sorry, there's only one scallop. Mm. <laughs> You've obviously done a great job to impress, you know, the number of people that you serve. Lovely soft pasta, beautiful soft silky spanner crab, lovely little scallop, maybe a little bit too brown, but still cooked perfectly. And that lovely sage flavour that just bursts in your mouth when you eat it. It's a great dish. I think you've done a good job in putting that plate of food up. Thank you. You are the one under most pressure in that kitchen. You are cooking a la minute to the minute, scallops, in the pan, literally, to the customer within seconds. Yeah. Um, fabulous job. And yeah, you burnt lots, you undercook some, you're braising them at times, but it's one of those things you've got to get into a rhythm of, yeah. and if you haven't cooked them, you know, day in, day out, wow. And the whole point about the experience of going to a restaurant is what happens on the plate. I don't care how many scallops George or Gary have thrown away to get me that one perfect thing. The issue is their accountant ringing them up and saying you're going out of business. <laughs> yeah. And you would send a lot of chefs bankrupt mm. with that behaviour. But in terms of a dish, what you've managed to do is to take a great dish and put it in front of the customer in the best possible way. And as either of these guys as head chefs would tell you, that's what you want in your kitchen. Mm. Thank you, Kirk. You may leave. Thank you. Well done.